looking back at the first book, I remember talking to you. <laughs> I think when 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 we when we talked when it came out, when Count's Town of Fallen Down came out, um, and I, I'd read that one because I haven't read the new one yet. I'm going to get it. Yeah. I'll, I'll, obviously, I, I, I need I need to read it. Um, I think you, you know um, Elvis Costello. We said at the time maybe didn't come out of that book particularly well at times, um, and, and, and I think you said you had some form of redress in mind. Uh, yes, I, you weren't the only person to, to, to mention those Elvis Costello stories uh, and see Elvis in a, in a bad light because of them. Uh, but the, the, there were two situations that, that I described um, where he was just being very performative. Mm-hmm. Uh, he suddenly had an image that he needed to live up to. Uh, so the first one in the first book, uh, was on the first night of the uh, this year's model tour in Belfast, where there was a kind of small party uh, back at the hotel. And uh, I remember him coming into that room with Jake Riviera, and they were like Bobby Nyworth and Bob Dylan in Don't Look Back. They were caustic, they were hip, they were cool, they were nasty. Hmm. It was just a big persona. I just recorded that moment. My own relations with Elvis were really great. We always got on really, really well. Um, a, a mutual love of country music, for instance. Of course, yeah. uh, he, he was a big Graham and Emmy Lou fan. Uh, and also, you know, Willie, uh, uh, Merle Haggard, Johnny Cash. And I was, I, I, I was, I was a bit shocked that um, my genuine affection and admiration for him had, had, had been... Uh, a bit discoloured by by what I'd written. Uh, there is a, a, a very very long uh, Elvis interview in the new book, and it was done around the time of the release of Spike, uh, and I did it in I love Dublin. That one, actually, yeah, uh, one of his last great ones. Yeah, I think I, think I totally agree with you. Yeah, yeah um, there's Blood and Chocolate that comes. Yeah, a bit later, which yeah. is for a ferocious masterpiece. Sorry? Still be Spike for me, I think. Of, of, of OK. The, yeah. Well, anyway, it concentrates on that. Uh, but the circumstances of the interview we'd been to, he he uh, appeared at the, the night before at the Irish Music Awards, uh, singing a version of Dark End of the Street, actually, with Christy Moore. Uh, and there, there was a big sort of after show at some country mansion just outside Dublin. And we, we, we went and we hit the bar like longshoremen. Uh, and I think it's possibly we, we were drunk before we were shown to our table. Uh, okay. Elvis was in the mood to, yeah. to get really plastered. And yeah. we had a great time, uh, rather forgetting that we had to meet early the next morning to do a formal interview. Okay. It was it was meant to be a two part um, Melody Maker cover story. So, yeah. you know, a couple of hours with him at least. Um, so the next day we were dreadfully hung over feeling very, very sorry for ourselves. And we went up to um, Elvis's um, room and started ordering beers in, which kept arriving through. And they just kept us going through the afternoon. And Costello turned, uh, he turned quite reflective. We started the interview um, talking about when every day on the road was as bad for him as he felt at that moment. So we started t- talking about, you know, the, the, the 78 tour, the 79 tour, when they were recording Get Happy in Holland, and they would, you know, he and the attractions were, you know, just taking tons of drugs, drinking themselves stupid, to the extent that he was writing songs on his way from the bar to the recording studio, which was in the same building. I, mm. I, I, I visited the same place many years later with the police, yeah. and the distance from the bar to the, uh, the, the, um, the studio is, is five minutes. So he must have been writing some songs very, very fast. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, he's, he's a fascinating character, isn't he, uh, Albus Costello? But do, do, you, do you think, um, so I, I need, I'm going to read, I'm going to read this book anyway, too late to stop now. But when, when I read that, th- there'll be a kind of counterbalancing going on there. You'll get a more, uh, a more rounded overview of, of the depth of Elvis Costello, I suppose. Absolutely, yes. And his humour, his good humour, as opposed to his more snarling, bitter reputation. Yeah. Um, but yes, I, I hope uh, that anybody having maybe having a fixed idea of Costello from the first book will, will have that 
rather altered by reading the the piece in the new book. 